Hi, welcome back to my insect friendly garden. You know, my, my first love uh, was um, were butterflies before I got into bumblebees. I, I, even when I was I, five, six, seven years old, I was just really fascinated by butterflies. They're so beautiful. Um, I did eventually realize that they're slightly airheaded, simple creatures compared to bees. Um, and slightly switched allegiance, but I still I still love to see butterflies uh, in my garden and do my best to attract as many as possible to to come and uh, and, and visit flowers and hopefully to breed to lay their eggs too um, And so I thought I'd show you some of the butterflies that, that you might be able to attract into into your garden I've spent the last couple of weeks um, in August um, filming little any, any butterflies I could see and I'm just gonna gonna talk you through them and give you a few hints and tips as to what you might do to encourage them so come with me on a butterfly tour look at this isn't that a glorious creature peacock butterfly of course so named because of the big eye spots that look just like a a peacock, uh, the eye spots on the tail of a male peacock bird. Very different purpose though, the, the eyes on a peacock bird's tail are to impress the females, just the males have them for showing off. As so far as we know, the butterflies don't use them for that, and both males and females have them. And they, these butterflies, they hibernate as adults, tuck themselves away in a quiet spot, often use old sheds and the like. And uh, when their wings are closed, the undersides are very dark and camouflaged. They look like a dead leaf. But uh, the idea is that if they're disturbed by a mouse or a bird looking for a snack, they flash their wings open and then these, sudden, these great eyes appear and hopefully the mouse is frightened off. I don't know if it works, but it's a nice idea. It certainly makes them look very beautiful. Peacocks are one of several common brightly coloured butterflies that uh, lay their eggs on nettles. Caterpillars eat the nettles. So, worth having a few nettles in a forgotten corner of your garden if you've got room. This is a really good plant for butterflies and not a well-known one. It's a uh, goose-necked lucistrife. I uh, just, just discovered it because there was some in my garden that I inherited and I've been encouraging it to spread because it's uh, it's really popular. You can see a lovely peacock there. But uh, there's also lots of um, gatekeepers have been coming on here and a comma butterfly. A rather elegant perennial plant. Seems really easy to grow. Here's a beautiful red admiral, a relative of the peacock butterfly. Very flashy, and this one's lovely and fresh. Isn't that one of the most gorgeous creatures you'll ever see? Absolutely stunning. Budley are living up to its name here, as it's often known as the bud uh, butterfly bush. And uh, they certainly do enjoy the nectar. Red Admirals. Uh, traditionally thought of as migrants, they don't overwinter in Britain. We were certainly I was told as a kid, but uh, in recent evidence suggests that at least some of them do spend the winter in the UK. This beauty is a. A comma butterfly related to the peacock and the small tortoiseshell and the red admiral. Not quite as flashy in terms of colours maybe, but I think these are gorgeous, almost my favourites. Look at those beautiful scalloped wing edges, an absolutely unmistakable butterfly. Beautifully camouflaged as a dead leaf when its wings are shut. Called a comma because on the underside, which you can't see, they have a, a white kind of C-shape, comma shape, little mark in the middle of the wing. Very easy to identify if you get a good look at them. Glorious.
This butterfly is a meadow brown. Not the most spectacular British butterfly. Here on the Verbena venariensis. See if we can go in a bit closer. This is a female. They're probably Britain's commonest butterfly overall. Mainly a sort of grassland meadow butterfly. And this one's become very scarce by flying away. This nice butterfly is a gatekeeper. It's a female, but the males are pretty similar. Um, common field of a uh, butterfly of sort of hedgerows and field margins and woodland edge. Very happily lives in my garden in quite large numbers. It's one of the commonest butterflies I have. Slightly smaller than the meadow brown, its cousin, and with much more orange on the upper sides of the wings. Lovely insects. They are grass feeders, like the meadow brown, they lay their eggs uh, in long grass. And the larvae are green and camouflaged and graze on the grasses. Just one generation a year on the wing in July. This chocolate brown butterfly is a ringlet, relative of the meadow brown and the gatekeeper, not quite so common, found in damper, shadier places. Um, I, I love these things, aren't they beautiful? So they're more or less just a uniform chocolate brown on top and a slightly paler brown on the underside, but decorated with these gorgeous big spots. Try and get in a little closer if I can. I have this grass and blades in the way. I'm trying to get there. No, lovely. Beautiful insect. Oh, I frightened her away. Here's a, another relative of the meadow brown and the gatekeeper and the ringlet, but. Uh, one very much associated with dappled shade and woodland, woodland rides and so on. This little beauty is a speckled wood, happens to be hanging out in my vegetable patch on the lettuce. Right, she's off. This gorgeous little insect is a female common blue butterfly, sadly not so common. And the underside is not very blue either. That lovely speckled pattern, really gorgeous little butterflies. It's here because I've started growing a bird's foot trefoil in a big pot and that's the food plant and I guess that's attracted her in. The males are much bluer, a bit bigger, and they have a top side that's bright blue. Stunning, but she's a very gorgeous little delicate creature. Fantastic. This, right in the middle there. It's a, a different blue butterfly. This is the holly blue, actually the commonest blue found in gardens. Um, lays its eggs on holly, obviously, and on ivy, uh, both of which are species you can often find in gardens. It's, they have this lovely habit of kind of wriggling their wings up and down. This gorgeous little chap is a small copper butterfly, same family as the blues, um, similar build and size, but very distinctive, unmistakable little creature, quite territorial, and the males set up territories and chase away any, any uh, other insects that uh, come nearby and chase after females. Uh, they lay their eggs on sorrel, uh, which is an easy plant to grow in. I've got some in my meadow area with my garden. Look at that, it's like a little jewel. Such handsome, unmistakable 
insects. There, in the centre of the shot, that funny little slightly moth-like butterfly. It's a thing called a large skipper. They're sitting in a characteristic position that they have at the moment. The wings kind of half open. All skipper butterflies are prone to doing that. This is a male, they're quite territorial. Um, you can tell it's a male because it's got a sort of diagonal blackish stripe in the middle of its top of its forewing, which is the scent scales, produce the pheromones to attract females. He's a bit battered, you can see his hind wing has been ripped somehow. But they're quite powerful fast flyers, they zoom around. Oh, and there you go, as if on cue he's zoomed. So there, flapping around, there's two big white butterflies and a third incoming. And the two nearest us are both large whites, and now one's flirting with a small white. There are three white species in the garden. Um, the large white and the small white, which are both um, lay their eggs on cabbages and are a bit of a pain if I'm honest, although they're beautiful butterflies there, look at that. Um, and the, the large white also happily lays its eggs on nasturtiums. Um, one of them was uh, investigating and I've already got some large white caterpillars on my nasturtiums there. Um, the other, the third one's the green veined white which I can't see at the moment but we'll try and get a better look at a, one of these large whites. This is a large white, fairly uh, easy to identify, big white as you might guess from the name and uh, with a kind of black trim. It's similar to the small white but bigger again fairly obviously and there's a slight difference in the shape of the black markings on the upper side which we can't see at the moment unfortunately. One's having a good drink. These are caterpillars of the large white butterfly. Famous for eating cabbages but also eat nasturtiums. And uh, that's what they're eating here. So they're gregarious. It's quite unusual for caterpillars to be gregarious. They basically like to live in groups and they, if you disturb them, they usually have a characteristic twitch. Oh, well, actually, <laughs> these ones are refusing to do anything. Never mind. Uh, uh, see, it's quite a large one that's almost fully grown round there. Making a bit of a mess of the plant, but it's hard to begrudge them because it's lovely to see the butterflies flying around. So this is a female la uh, small white butterfly small white. She's, uh, she's in my greenhouse actually where she snuck in to lay her eggs on my cabbages, the blighter. Um, the small white lays eggs one at a time on cabbages and they're solitary creatures and camouflaged in green. They look quite different to the larvae of the large white which lays its eggs all together and the larvae are gregarious. But uh, the adult butterflies look quite similar, but the small white, as the name suggests, is quite a lot smaller than the large white. So here we have a pair of green veined white butterflies, the females at the top, the male just dangling there by his genitals, as you do. Um, often mistaken for the small white, which is one of the pests of cabbages, but these are not pests at all. They're, um, actually, there, they've settled again. Uh, if their offspring feed on wild hedgerow, brassicas, cabbage family plants, they never touch our domestic cabbages at all and uh, easily distinguished if you get a good look at them by those lovely lines, the, the greyish or sometimes greenish veins 
on the underside of the hindwing. Very handsome. So, there you go. Attracting butterflies is actually really simple. Um, they, they need two things. They need a source of nectar, something like Buddleia is great, um, Echinacea is a good cosmos, uh, Gooseneck Lucistrife is really good in my garden, um, and Marjoram is fantastic. So they need the nectar for the adults, and then they need somewhere to lay their eggs. And there they tend to be much fussier because um, most species of butterfly will only lay their eggs on one or perhaps a few related plants. So, for example, the, those beautiful peacock butterflies will only lay their eggs on nettles, um, as do several of their relatives. Um, so if you want to, to have them breeding in your garden, you need to provide them with a nice big patch of nettles. Not everyone's cup of tea, but if you've got room, great. Um, if you've got uh, holly and ivy, you might get holly blue butterflies. If you grow a bit of bird's foot trefoil, you might get common blue butterflies. Orange tip butterflies, we didn't see them because they're on the wing in the spring, but I have them breeding in the garden and they feed on ladies' smock, which is a pretty little flower, nice to grow. And so on and so on. Actually, the simplest thing to do is just have some long grass. I'm just sitting in front of a patch of it. And there's a whole load of butterfly species, meadow butterflies, the skippers and the browns, uh, that feed on, on various grasses. Um, and so not cutting your lawn too often is a really simple way of providing breeding habitat for uh, butterflies. So go on, see, see, uh, see what you can do. See how many species of butterfly you can find uh, or you can attract to your garden. Good luck.